So the idea here is to invest intelligently, have less risk, use less capital, spend less time managing the markets. Again, there's a lot in life that you miss out on if you're sitting there watching every tick in the marketplace. Believe it, I know it for sure. Um, and the idea is to get greater returns. So I've got a couple of great strategies here today that we're going to talk about. Stock substitution is a strategy that is a way to trade the stocks that you see as opportunities with, again, the less capital, again, the less risk, and greater returns. And then also we're going to talk about another strategy today to get the stocks you want at a discount or to get paid not to. So these are two very straightforward strategies. Um, and then part of that also is a wheel that you can use to build your long-term portfolio, just a basic trick that uh, portfolio managers use to get the stocks they want or they get paid not to. So let's get into this a little bit. First off, let's talk about the market. Um, the market, obviously, continues to remain strong. The fundamentals haven't changed. The situation is what it is. Every time the market sells off, it bounces back, and it bounces back the distance of the sell-off on top of the old highs. That's happened for five years. I'm not going to try and be the smartest guy that's been trying to pick the top of the market. I'm going to take advantage of what the markets are telling me, what the price action is telling me. And right now, the trend is strong. And here, if you look at the S&P, you can see the S&P has been trading traded between 1,900 and 2,000 for a number of months after trading between 1,800 and 1,900 for a number of months. So therefore, that targets 2,100 in the S&P, which is another leg higher. And if you go the distance of this sell-off that we saw here recently, you can add that on top. You come up with that same 2,200 as well. So there's still more upside in the broad market. The S&P is the measurement of the marketplace. When people ask, how's the market doing? You, you focus on the S&P. That's what money managers are scored against. That's what your mutual funds are scored against. That's what everything's scored against. So don't feel like you've missed out on anything. Like I said, the markets aren't good or bad. Just because they've gone up doesn't mean the markets have been good. We've had a five-year surge in the marketplace. Every single time, every crisis de jour, the market has bounced back. Someday it's not going to, okay? I'm not saying it's going to go up forever, but right now I'm going to trade what the market is giving me. People said it was too extended three years ago. They said it was too extended two years ago. They said it was too extended last year. They said it was too extended last month. I am not in the business of trying to figure out why the markets do what they do. I'm in the how business, how the markets do what they do. And right now, earnings are fantastic. Corporations are doing as, as great as ever. The PE ratios are not astronomic. They're very, very reasonable. It's all about earnings and corporations are doing exceptionally well. Now, let's, do, let's separate that from the economy, okay? Corporations and stocks are not the economy. The economy may not be doing great. There's a lot of issues in the economy, but things have gotten better, um, whereas the stock market has done fantastic. So we'll answer some questions. We'll talk about some of this stuff at the end of the, at the, end of the presentation today. A little bit about me. Like I said, I've been doing this for 20-some uh, years. Hopefully, I don't look like an old grizzled trader, but I am. I trade on the floor at Chicago Board of Trade. Um, I've done brokerage business. I've done a lot of option business. I've been on all sides of the market, all products. Um, in what's very important, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade and the discipline that you use that's, that's most significant. So like I said, I've been doing this for a long time, going on 25 years. If you look at the CNBC, just a name drop here with Maria, when I appeared there, the Dow, the Dow was at 10,000. Now, I don't remember if the Dow at 10,000 on the way down or if the Dow was 10,000 on the, on the way up. So, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Markets move. Markets aren't high or low. Markets just are. And they move. It's our, it's our job to learn how to extract money out of them. If you look at the Dow, the Dow made new all-time highs today. Uh, the Dow had been the laggard. It's still the laggard. It's only up about 4% year-to-date. It's been slowing down. I've seen a lot of opportunities. I think in Dow stocks that haven't participated in this overall rally, um, and that's something that I look for is distressed stocks um, that haven't participated that are on key levels of support. Oh, Raleigh, we'll talk thank about you. that in that strategy in a minute. So, but let's, the Dow is not the market. So when people ask you how the Dow is doing, that's only 30 stocks and it's not weighted correctly. It's weighted by price, not market capitalization. So is IBM five or four times more important than Microsoft? I, I don't think so. So the Dow is not a good reflection. And the NASDAQ is not the market. The NASDAQ's up 14%. Uh, didn't quite make new highs today, but got very, very close. Um, but the NASDAQ's not the market yet. But you look at the overall trend in the NASDAQ, it's got these 200-point stair steps where it continues to go up, 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 up. And now that we've gone above 4,000, that target's 4,200. You've taken the distance of the sell-off where it bounced up 4010 the other day. Still more upside in the marketplace. So to get back to it, the market is in the S&P. The S&P is extremely, extremely strong. 
and there are opportunities. But for whatever reason, people never want to buy in when stocks are on sale. That's a whole psychology issue that we can talk about. But you know, you want to look at opportunities in this overall uptrend, these pullbacks, these levels of support to be long uh, and lean on levels so that you've got good reward to risk. So today we're going to talk about how to trade the stock market like never before. Like I said, this is the best time in history. Now, I don't want to, and I'm sure with this crowd, with this audience, uh, no one's offended by the word trade. Trade is actually a trader is a more sophisticated investor. An investor wants to make money. A trader has a plan to make money. There's a difference. An investor puts some money into a trade and doesn't have an exit plan. They say, well, I want to make money. Well, what does that mean? How much are you willing to risk? What, you know, what are your parameters? It's not 1985 where you can buy shares of Coca-Cola, put it in a drawer, and forget about it. Things are much different. You have to trade the market. A trader has a point where they want to get in, a point where they want to get out if it goes for them, and a point where they want to get out if it goes against them. So it's about managing the position. So this is the best time in history, and I take issue with uh, Mr. Michael Lewis, who's a great writer who wrote uh, that book on, that book where he talked about the markets being rigged. I think that is totally farcical. That In that issue, they're saying that the markets get skimmed for half a penny by these high-frequency traders. Well, guess what? The spreads now are in pennies, number one, whereas they used to be in, in, uh, in 12 and a half cents and in quarters. So the difference between the price you buy and the price you sell is dramatically, dramatically tighter. You can get in and out when you want. There's, so that ensures your trading discipline, your trading plan will be executed smoothly. Your commissions are minuscule compared to the $100 it used to cost at Bear Stearns years ago. Uh, you can take advantage of the opportunities anytime, day or night, any market. And just to digress for a little bit, when I traded on the floor, I used to, you know, uh, make things happen. And if things don't happen, you know, you, you can't force trades. If you force trades, you're going to end up losing money. We all know this game. Back in the day, you would be limited to that one, one pit that you traded in. I couldn't just go over to the crude pit, or I just couldn't go over to the soybean and start trading. That's not how it worked. I couldn't just get on my computer and start trading stocks or start trading options. So my, my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, used to call me in the afternoons, and it was an interesting story because she would call me and I'd be up at Wrigley Field. And she wouldn't understand I was actually saving money by not being in the pit and forcing trades. So things have changed with electronic trading wherever the opportunity is in any market at any time. Click a button, bang, you can take advantage of it. So there's a big difference, and this is by far the best time in history. There are no barriers to entry. Everyone has equal access. All traders, all, all orders are traded equally so there are nobody has an advantage over the markets so there's always opportunity I'm sorry if it sounds a little Canadian but that's just my voice there's always opportunity in the marketplace and trading is all about one thing there's only one thing that a professional wants to focus is on on risk control you want to focus on what your risk is what's your worst case scenario what's your maximum risk and then you can focus on other things in your probability and your break even and managing the trade and so forth, but you've got to evaluate the risk on each and every trade. No one trade should have any cat catastrophic effect on you. And as I've gotten older, I've realized being wrong is part of the business. But being wrong and having one bad trade have an impact on you is, is, is a big, huge mistake. You can't let it weigh on you. Then you get into a bad trade and it gets worse and you get, you get focused on that. You can't see new opportunities. And now all of a sudden the trade gets catastrophically worse. Now, not only financially, but mentally, it's, 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 it's got you beaten. So the idea here is to take advantage of the markets using probability and risk control and not have a gambler's mentality. No one trade should have any negative impact on you. This is not Texas Hold'em. We're not putting in everything on one trade. Divide your account into 20 pieces. Each trade's 5%. Risk half on each trade. Each trade has a maximum risk or impact on your account of 2.5%. So it's about allocation and it's about, it's about risk control. So let's get into this using options as a vehicle. Now, I choose options and I love the options markets for many reasons, but one is because you can control your probability. And that's really what's most important. And you can profit not only if the market moves up or down, but if it moves sideways, there are different vari variables that you can control. And they're very simple and straightforward. I'm not here to be that complicated options guy and impress you with my options and knowledge. I want to use options as a vehicle. I want to use options as a vehicle to take advantage of whatever the markets do. And I'm able to use options to control my probability on a trade. I can know specifically what the probability of success on each and every trade is. I make the decision, is that enough for me or is that not enough for me? Your individual risk tolerance, your account size, your experience will help you determine what fits your risk profile. But I know my probability before I get into a trade, as opposed to 
a 50-50 chance of buying a stock. There are many, many limited risk strategies. So no matter what happens, I know my maximum exposure. I know my maximum loss. No matter what happens, if, if things go completely crazy or some complete surprise, there is no panic. There is, there is no emergency situation where I have to make a decision. I have my plan in place. And I can use options to increase my returns. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Two strategies that really can increase your returns with high probability. And I think one of the best advantages is, again, from a lifestyle standpoint, is to have staying power. A lot of these moves that we've had in the stocks here recently would have flushed you out of individual stocks. Um, whereas in the options, you have staying power to ride through the ups and downs. And I'm going to talk about which options, which strikes, which months, and how to use probability in your favor. And that's what we're going to that's what we're going to talk about today. So staying power is a very very important feature because you can use options as a long term vehicle. So let's look at some of the basics here. You want to select the right strategy for the market. You need to select the right option. And the key here is time. Buying more time than you need. Now, if you come to Chicago and you go to the Chicago uh, Options Exchange here, you will see some of the best sports cars and luxury cars in in the world uh, in this parking garage. There's a reason for that. Those traders on the floor, they sell what we call in our business lottery tickets. A typical novice option trader buys an option that has too little time and is too far out of the money. So probability is stacked, stacked, stacked against them. They want to buy some cheap option thinking there's going to be some big move. And they typically buy the front month option. So if something big doesn't happen in the next two weeks, that option just dies and it's over. And it evaporates and melts like an ice cube. Those are called lottery tickets in our business. They could, they could come in, but the chance of them is, in, is tiny, tiny, tiny. So to alleviate that, you want to buy time. The more time you have is the more time you have to be right. So instead of buying the front month options, let's buy at least three months of time, or maybe even six months of time. And we're going to talk about buying even more time than that. So you take that, that, you know, that out of the equation. Because as everybody's seen, a lot of times, somehow, you buy the right option, but you don't buy the right amount of time. And whatever you're expecting to happen often happens after your option is over. So we want to alleviate that and get that, get that out of the way. So how to use options. I want to make things very, very simple. I want to use the most simple strategies possible because they're most efficient um, for a number of reasons. You don't want to use a compl complicated four-legged option strategy because you've got to pay four commissions. There's four edges that you have to give up to get in and out. So the simplest, most straightforward strategy, again, we're just using options as a vehicle. So if we look here, options, again, simply a vehicle. There are variables that we can control. We can control which direction we're looking for the market to move. We can control what price amplitude we're looking for the market to move. We can control the amount of time that we're expecting that move to be. And we can use volatility in our favor. Now, volatility is important. Volatility is simply opportunity. The more a market moves, the more opportunity there is for us. You want to think of it this way. We're never going to buy the low and sell the high. The idea is to take a high probability chunk out of the middle of any market move. Now, volatility is an important component to talk about because when we talk about options pricing, it's one of the things that impacts the price of an option. When volatility is high, options are more expensive because there's potential of greater movement. When volatility is low, options are cheaper in relative terms. So if we look at volatility, for the course of this year, we just made new seven-year lows here recently back in June. For the course of this year, volatility has been trading between, um, what do we have here, 14 and 12 for much of the year. We get these bounces, what I call explosions, but the market gets whack a mole right back down every single time. Now what I found interesting is that the last couple of times we made new highs, and today is probably a good example, the, vol the volatility has not made new lows. So what that means to me, and volatility closed at 12.05 today, and the low is 11.24. So we're still significantly above those lows, again, those seven-year lows made earlier this summer. So that tells me that the market is not that complacent. The market is not, you know, uh, is not that unworried anymore. So there's still more downside in volatility. So if there's still more downside in volatility, there's still more upside in stocks. So if you look back in 2006, volatility was below 10. So there's still more downside here. And 1205 minus 1024 is 181 points divided by 1205. So those lows from earlier this summer are still 15% below. That doesn't mean the stock market's going up 15%. That just means that there's still more downside in volatility. And that means options are cheap in relative terms. They can get cheaper, 
This is why volatility can get lower. People don't buy volatility just because it can only go one direction. It can go lower. And if you look at a 10 or 15 year chart, you'll see that. So let's talk about volatility. We're going to have two strategies today. One's a low volatility, one a low volatility strategy, and one's a high volatility strategy. So we'll look at those. And again, the simplest strategy is the most efficient. So the one that I want to start with here, it's called stock substitution. The idea is to use less capital, less risk, and potentially much greater returns than just buying or selling the stock. So if you look at this, this is a much more efficient way to get into shares of stock for long term and looking for the mark, you know, looking for the markets to have a move. You also have the staying power to ride through the market ups and downs. And that's a great example that we've seen in the last couple of weeks, and I'll show you in a couple of my examples here today. The stock substitution strategy, very straightforward. Each option controls 100 shares of stocks. So it's much cheaper to buy one option than to buy the 100 shares of stock. The option is going to cost less, and your maximum risk is whatever you paid for that option. So if you pay $600, no matter what happens, the worst that option can do is expire worthless. I put in a stop loss at half of what we pay. We'll talk about that in a second from a mathematical standpoint. But no matter what happens, if that stock goes boom tomorrow all the way to zero, the worst case scenario is your option goes to zero. Whereas on a stock, if you're trading a $60 stock, there's a lot of downside between 60 and zero. So it acts much like the stock in price movement. The idea here is to get the benefits of owning the stock with less cost, and therefore you're going to get greater returns. So with the options markets, now a lot of markets trade in pennies, meaning that it's very easy to buy and sell these options. Whenever you want to buy, there's plenty of people that want to sell. Whenever you want to sell, there's plenty of people who want to buy. So there's tight liquid markets to execute your trading plan Whereas 10, 10, 12, 15 years ago, when guys traded on the floor, they had wider spreads. That's how they made their money, and uh, they weren't, the markets weren't as efficient. So to get into the trading rules, very, very basic trading rules, we want to use the in-the-money options that have a delta of 75% or higher. Now, delta is the only word that I'm going to use, the only Greek that I'm going to use today. And all that delta means is that's a percentage that that position moves in reference to the underlying. So if the underlying moves a dollar, the option should move 75 cents. You want an option that's going to reflect the, un the movement of the underlying, going to move much like the, the underlying stock. So we want to make sure we're getting a good payoff is what it comes down to. You're not buying these out-of-the-money options that have one, two, three, four, five percent deltas, because even if the market moves in your favor, you don't, you don't profit a lot. The idea here is to profit from only a modest move in the market. If the market has a great, great move, that's, that's great. Any option would make money. But if the market only has a modest move, we want to be able to make significant returns. The break-even needs to be about $1.50 away or less. I want to make sure, again, that a modest move, that there's profit from it. So our break-even, you know, let's have it a dollar away so you're not expecting a whole lot. You can still make money from only a couple, two, three, four dollar move in a stock. And you want to buy enough time to be right. I cannot stress time enough. Buy more time than you need. I'm in a position right now, and uh, for the January 2016 Groupon options, um, and I get a lot of questions and concerns that that might be too much time. You can never have too much time. I would be silly not to buy the January 2016 versus the January 2015 for an extra 20 or 30 dollars. Why not have a year of time? Because volatility is an extreme low buy time. It's very important. Even though you may not use it, I could sell the option tomorrow. That doesn't mean I'm holding it to the end. It means if I had to, I could. I have enough time to be right. So we'll talk about that, and I'll show you a couple examples as well. And a key to me is from a discipline standpoint is not to risk the whole option premium, to risk 50% of what you pay. So if you buy an option for $600, put in a stop loss at half. So at $300, we're going to say that's enough because either the market's gone the other way or we're running out of time. Those are two things that are working against you when it comes to options. And at that time, it's best to salvage, get what you can. You can always get back in, but it's a lot better to be out of the market and reevaluate, decide if you want to get in, than to be in and hoping that things, you, things can get better. Because hope is not a trading strategy. A good example of that is in the couple, last couple of weeks, we got stopped out of McDonald's. I still don't believe in McDonald's long term. McDonald's made new lows, new year lows, just last week at 90 bucks, and then bounce and close at 93 that same day. So that was a... That was a, a, a stop out, reversal, very positive sign actually, but we got knocked out. I can always get back into McDonald's and now I can get into some June options um, and give myself plenty of time because I'm a, a believer based upon that 90 level 
um, in that McDonald's. So that's a good example of being stopped out is not a bad thing. It happens. All right, let's look at a couple uh, specific examples. Here's a, here's a cheaper stock, a smaller dollar stock, JetBlue. JetBlue um, was trading sideways. You could see there between $8 and $9 for a long period of time for six months. So technically speaking, looked like it was going to break out and make, make a run to the upside, a $1 move. How do you take advantage of that? You could buy the shares of stock, look for it to run, you know, but that ties up some money. So an in-the-money call is the way to go after it. The stock was at $8.40. The in-the-money jet blue call, the $7 call, was trading at $1.85. So that option was costing $185 instead of buying the 100 shares that would cost $840. So it's a much less capital investment. And it's an in-the-money call, gives you the right to be long from $7. So it's $1.40 in the money. That means that that's the value, that's the real value it had. The rest of what it had was, was what we call time value. <coughs> so that time value put the break even only 45 cents higher. So as of the May 8th entry, buying the January option had June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and then January. I had eight months for development, and I needed the stock to move 45 cents in eight months. Wasn't asking a whole lot. Acts like the stock in price movement. I was putting in my risk at half of the premium paid, so essentially was risking $90. I needed a 45 cent move in eight months, and based on the technicals of the chart, we had some very positive charts. And then where we go? Boom! Takes off. Makes a run. Makes a run from 9 to 10, and actually went up to 11, almost 12. So we left some money on the table. But the beauty of the stock substitution strategy is the return. The stock moved 15% in the period of a couple weeks. All right, the stock moved 15%. Again, we had the January options. That doesn't mean we're holding all the way to January. When you can get that kind of return in a short period of time, put it in the bank. That's a 46% return. The stock went up 15%, but the option gained three times that. The option gained nearly 50%. That's the power of options using the in-the-money stock substitution strategy. That's the power of options that was demonstrated by that on a low dollar stock, a low amount of risk, a low amount of time kept following the markets. With these particular strategies, I look at these things on a weekly basis. I'm not worried about the ups and downs of it on a daily basis. I'm looking at the big picture because I'm having six, eight months a year for good things to happen in this particular stock. So it's a very healthy return, um, and you can see in a very short period of time. Things happened quicker than we wanted. We had more time than we needed. And we had the staying power to ride through some ups and downs if we needed to. So again, look at that stock. Left some money on the table. That's fine. What I've learned in my many, many years of trading is, again, we're not going to buy the low and sell the high. A nice high probability piece out of the middle and prepare for new positions. The idea is to have some strategies and some disciplines so that you can repeat them on a consistent basis. That's where returns come from. So the key to learn here is the jet block, jet blue stock gained 15%. That's a nice, nice, healthy, healthy move. Can't complain about that. 15% in a couple weeks, two, three weeks, or whatever it was. That's a great move. But look at the return when using the options and having a maximum risk on the position. That's how to use options to take advantage of it. So you got you had less capital, you had less risk, and greater return. The delta on this was 80%. So it acted much like the stock, but it didn't have the downside of the stock. So sold at $2.70, May 29th. So with these trades, the stock substitution strategy, when before I get into the trade, I'm putting my stop loss at half what I pay. I'm often putting a, a profit order at 50%, and um, I have my trading plan in place. I don't have to watch things on a moment by moment basis. Now let's look at a bigger stock. Let's look at something like an Apple, a bigger dollar stock. This also works on bigger dollar stocks. I wanted to show you a cheap option to start with. And if we look at Apple, Apple had lost its shine. Everybody had given up on Apple. Um, and then they did their 741 split. The stock became more affordable in people's eyes. They started to, I, I'm not going to say innovate again, but they be, started to become uh, less, less hated. And if you looked at things technically, you know, we traded in a sideways range between 70 and, 80, 70 and 80 for a period of time, had a $10 move, that distance, up to 90, 
And then I used that breakdown, again, buying after the market had a very significant move from its lows, a momentum play, buying when it came back to that 90 level. Well, you're not just going to buy shares of Apple at 90 and just hang on. You know, some people can, but it's, a, it's much more efficient to use a stock substitution strategy. So when Apple was at $92.65, wanted to lean on that 90 level of support. It was resistance before, active support on the downside. Again, a strong momentum stock with a key level of support to lean on, the risk reward in your favor, looking for Apple to get to 100, and $100.75 was the all time high in Apple. So we were looking for Apple to get back to the ties, essentially, and that's what happened. Well, the in the money call, if we go back to the chart, the 80 call, which is at a very key level of support here, the 80 call was in the money, giving us the delta that we wanted, the high delta. It was trading for about $13.15. The 80 call, was $12.65 in the money. So our break even was 50 cents higher. We were looking for, with the October options, again, this is in June, we were looking for the stock to move 50 cents July, August, September, October. Four months. Now, because Apple's a higher dollar stock and because it's got greater volatility, the options weren't as cheap as they were in JetBlue in relative terms. So looking for a 50 cent move in Apple, <coughs> excuse me, in four months. That was our objective. It would have cost $9,265 to buy the 100 shares and, and hang on and go for the ride. Or we could buy an option for $1,300. An expensive option, true. I will not dispute that. But you're controlling 100 shares of Apple. And we're putting in a stop loss. So we're risking roughly $650. So $650 with our break even, 50, 60 cents higher, <coughs> in a position that's going to act much, much like the stock. Less capital. Less risk. What's the risk? The risk is the option goes to zero. Whereas if you're in the stock, I don't know. I don't know how it's possible. But let's say Apple goes to zero. From $90 to zero is a big, 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 big long way. Whereas the option, you've got your stop loss in play and so forth. Boom. Apple does its thing. Now, what was interesting here is you can see after we got into the trade, about three weeks later, Apple took off and got just got up to $99.50. We had a profit order at a 50% profit. We missed out on the profit order by mere pennies. And Apple sold off again. If you remember, the NASDAQ took a nosedive. But what this illustrates here is the staying power of options. If I had the stock, I would have got flushed out on Apple on that, on that downward turn. But because we had the option, we had four months of time, we had a good position, and we were leaning on that 90 level of support, when it did rally up and make new highs a couple weeks ago, we used that as our exit strategy. Now, Apple did get up to 103 or so, so it did extend itself, and it still got a lot more upside. But we made a healthy return on a minimal investment with low risk in a short period of time. So the stock made an 8% gain when it finally got up to $100. Now, it ended up taking a couple of months. You know, a couple of months, that seems like a long time. And, and with these options, you've got the staying power to ride through the ups and downs, ups and downs. But the position made 51% in a period of a, of a couple of months. Again, price movement got greater return. The stock moved 8%. The option moved 51%. That's how to use the power of options and our stock substitution strategy. So to review this once again, the option was $12.60 in the money. We bought it for $13.15. $13 so our break even was $0.60 cents higher. The delta on this option was 80%. We had plenty of time. Now, I sold out of this August option, I'm sorry, this October option in August. Still had a couple of months. It could have gone a lot further. Apple may still go a lot, lot higher. But we accomplished our goals in a short period of time, 50% return in two months. No complaints. And you'll be amazed at how much e easier your lifestyle is if you've got this hands-off approach to the markets and looking at things in a more long-term viewpoint in a different prism, looking at the big picture and having options that are going to gain from the big picture and not have as much concern about the short-term volatility. So again, to review on this particular strategy, and then we'll get into the next one, Roger asked a question, how much, how much of your account do you risk per trade? Again, from a allocation standpoint, I recommend, and again, I'm not giving any personal advice, but a good recommendation is to divide your account into 20 pieces. Uh, each each piece of pie in your account, therefore, is five percent. So, there, if you're risking half of your five percent on any on any one tr trade, so you're really risking two and a half percent. So, if you're wrong on your trade, completely wrong, you get stopped out. You get ninety-seven and a half percent of your account left. 
So that's a good rule of thumb anyways. Uh, but it varies by your account size, your experience, your risk tolerance, and, and what's comfortable for you. Start small. You can always become a bigger trader. All right, that's a, a good recommendation. If you're not familiar with options, I've recommended to people to start with one option um, or a small dollar amount per option so then your, all your positions are equal in, uh, in weight. But the idea is not to learn how to, not to make money initially, to be, be, get comfortable. Then you can always increase your size once you understand the mechanics and you get your comfort factor. But it's, it's a lot different than if you start as a 10 option trader and then, you know, lose some money on some trades and then have to become a one option trader. It, it, it's, it's, it's very hard to turn that corner. So start small. You can always become a bigger, better trader uh, in the future. And the future is always there. All right. Uh, do you have a minimum record open interest level? No, I don't. Um, I want to trade, and I'm going to trade good liquid stocks that have a lot of buyers and sellers, and I want to make sure my break even, like I said, is not more than $1.50 away, but <clears throat> it's a reflection of how wide that bid and ask is. If that, if that bid and ask is too wide, then my break even is too far away, and it's not going to fit my parameters. But there's always a market. There's always a two-sided market. There's always price you can buy. There's always price you can sell. Open interest is just the number of contracts that have already traded. So if I'm getting into new trades now, I'm looking at April options. April options may not have a whole lot of open interest, but I'll look at the Januarys, I'll look at the Octobers, and I'll see, yeah, is there a lot of activity in those? And the answer is usually yes. And as time goes on, the Aprils will pick up in time. But it's a function of how wide the bid-ask spread is, is, really, um, is really, really the key. How do you identify 75% plus delta option? It's right on your screen. Every option chain should have the delta. And another factor of the delta that I want to recommend, for our purposes, the delta is the probability that that option will be in the money at expiration. So if it's got an 80% 80% delta, that's got an 80% probability that that option will be in the money at expiration. So that is something that I feel much more comfortable with as well. So you, we'll talk about that. Now it says, what do you mean with a $1.50 away uh, break even? Well, let's just quick look here and go back to Apple. All right. Apple was trading at $92.60. So if I buy the 80 call, that 80 call is has a value of $12.60 of real value, and then the rest is time value. So it's $12.60, subtract the price the stock is trading at and your strike price, because that 80 call gives you the right to be long from 80. You could exercise that option, not that you're going to. You could exercise that option, you'd be long from 80, then you sell the shares, boom, you're out, and, you, and it's a $12.60 difference. Now that option is trading for $13.15. So it's a little bit more expensive because there's that time component there that the market could make some moves. So that break even is you take that difference there, that $13.15, difference from that in the intrinsic value, so it comes out with, what are we looking at here? 40 cents, 55 cents, exactly. That is 60 cents, it's 55 cents. So 55 cents, so I needed the stock to move 55 cents in the period of four months for me to be above my break even at expiration. So that's the example. All right, break even of $1.50 or way or less, but the, the moral of the story, the lesson we learned is, I'm not expecting a significant move. I will profit from only a modest move in the stock. Hopefully my stock selection and my homework has been great and I've picked a good stock that, that, uh, you know, that I've got a good advantage on as far as identifying the direction of it and then I'm using that option to mathematically put things on my side. Again, the key, buy enough time to be right, I can't state that enough, and risk 50% of your premium paid. So you know your maximum risk before you get into the trade. So you know what your worst case scenario is. If it goes to zero, you can live with that. I'm not happy about it, but you know, things happen. But you're gonna, you put in a stop loss at half because if the time starts to erode against you or the market moves the other way, let's get knocked out, let's reevaluate. You can always get back in. To review, and I'll talk about the next strategy in a moment here, the stock substitution strategy gives you the right to control 100 shares of stock. It's much, much cheaper than buying the shares, especially now with volatility very low. Your maximum risks, no matter what happens, is the premium paid. Sleep well, my friends. Enjoy your dinner. Don't pay attention to what's happened in overnight markets. Don't have to watch all the news and every earnings report. You've got your plan in place, where to get in, where to get out, where to get out if it goes against you, where to get out if it goes against you. It acts much like the stock in price movement, so you get all the benefits, but without as much risk. And again, the key now is the liquid markets allow for this disciplined trading plan to be executed smoothly. So let me just give you a couple examples here and brag a little bit that we've uh, done uh, here with the, the bar chart pulls by options. Uh, JP Morgan Chase, 50% in 14 days. You can see some very short-term moves 
That's not what I'm looking for. A lot of these options have at least eight months of time, uh, if not longer. So we've seen some significant moves in the markets. So we use that to take advantage of it. And if you get 50% in, in three days, I put it in the bank. You know, some of these other ones, 21 days, the McDonald's one, I sh uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Apple one took a couple of months. I'm looking at windows of time of, you know, six to eight months at minimum. And in that window, looking to take advantage of the market. All right, let's talk about another strategy here. Now, that was a low volatility strategy. In general, the markets have low volatility, so options are relatively inexpensive. There are individual stocks that are whips on all over the place that have a lot of worry, a lot of concern in them, a lot of dynamics, and a lot of volatility. So we use that strategy, a high volatility strategy, to take advantage of stocks that we want to own, and I can't stress that enough, that I want to own at a discount. Rick asked me about earnings season, and I'll just answer that very quickly. Earnings, they're called quarterly earnings for a reason, because they come out every quarter. So there's four times a year. If I'm in positions for eight or, eight or nine months, I can't trade around the earnings. I have my plan in place. Earnings can be good, earnings can be bad. And more times than not, they're indifferent. They don't have any major impact on the market. We're not trading earnings. We're trading the overall trend in the markets. We have got enough time. So if some surprise comes from the earnings and the position goes against us, in the near term, we're looking at the long-term trend, and we've got a good disciplined plan and a risk-reward based on what we bought it, where we bought it at, and leaning on a support level <coughs> Excuse me for the long term. Oftentimes, earnings are a catalyst on the upside, as we've seen here. Uh, earnings seasons have been great over and over and over and over again. Everybody gets worried that this is the, this is the earnings season and things aren't going to be great. I can't tell you. I trade what I see. I trade my plan. It's not something that you can trade around that you trade through it. All right, let's talk about the options wheel. You want to use this to buy stocks that you want at a discount. Again, I can't stress enough, stocks that you want. You're not afraid to owning. Everyone here is familiar with a covered call. This is a variation, a mathematical equivalency of a covered call. What we're doing here is we're either buying the stock at a discount or we're getting paid not to. You don't do a covered call on a stock that you don't want to own for the long term because whatever the, the Whatever you took in for the call, the dollar you took in, if it's a $75 stock, lowers your basis to 74 That's not going to help you if the stock sells off down to 30 So this has to be something that you want to own for the long term, that you're prepared to own, that you have a strong feeling about owning in your portfolio. You sell, we'll talk about that in a second, but it's a stock you want to own or you're paid not to. And again, it comes back to probability. These are high probability plays to generate small monthly revenue streams. In addition to my regular directional trading, this is a way to take advantage of some high volatility stocks in stocks that I wouldn't be afraid to own at a discount at a lower price. Uh, Facebook when it was below $20. U.S. Steel when it was in you know close to single digits. You know stocks that hey, okay, what's the downside in U.S. Steel? Is it going to go bankrupt? Uh, probably not. Okay, I could set, I, I could get into it at single digits. Yada yada. Facebook. You know, when it had that big sell-off after the, after the IPO, that was a strategy to get into it at a lower price or to get paid not to. So we'll talk about that. J.C. Penney here recently, Best Buy recently. Uh, what, 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 what else? Uh, Mankind. We'll look at some individual stocks that I have no problem owning at lower levels um, or get paid not to. So the idea here is to generate monthly revenue streams and repeat this. Do this on a monthly basis. Now you are the guy selling the lottery tickets. You are selling BlackBerry. Great. That's one we've done many, many times. You are selling the lottery tickets, okay? And I'll show you the specifics of that. And the idea here is to be able to repeat this and sell, uh, do these positions on a monthly basis so that you can do it the next month, the next month, or until you get into the stock at a lower level. So let me show you how this works and the mathematics behind it. What we're doing here is we're selling cash secured puts. Let me stress the word cash again. Cash secured puts. We have the money in our account to buy the shares if it gets assigned to us. We're not doing this on margin. We are prepared to own the stock at a lower, lower price. If you just mentioned uh, BlackBerry, that you want to buy BlackBerry, let's say you want to buy it at nine. It's trading at 10 and change, okay? Or 11 or wherever it is. You want to buy it at nine. You can put in a limit order at nine and wait for it to come to you. Wait, 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 wait. If it comes to you, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Put in a limit order. Or what you do is you sell a cash secured put on that stock at the 10 level or the 9 level or whatever and get paid until the stock goes down every month. And when it goes down, then you're buying it at a lower level. So the idea here is to generate returns of 3 to 5 to 8% a month or less than a month and do this with the front month options so you are selling the lottery tickets. 
Now, you don't have unlimited exposure. You have exposure down to zero on these single-digit stocks that we're typically going to use, so you can quantify and know what your exposure is, and something that you want to have in your portfolio for the long term. This is a way to buy into a stock that you want to at a discount. And a little portfolio trick. You know, a guy that wants to add a couple, you know, whatever, 100,000 shares of Apple, doesn't just put in a limit price and wait for it for his hedge fund. You know, he could sell some cash secured puts on Apple at 95 and wait to buy Apple at, you know, wait till it gets assigned and get paid every month until that happens. So this is a way to get into a stock at a lower price as opposed to a limit order and get paid not to. Small monthly returns add up. So let's just say you could get 2% a month. 2% a month is 25%, 24% a year. Now we're looking at high probability. So we're looking at typically a probability of 80% or higher. Obviously these are not all winners. Um, but the idea is to generate small monthly returns with high probability on a consistent basis in addition to what you're doing with your regular, regular directional trading. That is the key. In the background, just quickly, the rule of 72, I'm sure everybody knows it, but I just want to remind people, you take your investment return, whatever it is, 8%, 10%, 4%, divide it by 72, and that'll tell you how long it takes your account to double. So if you get that 24%, Return, 2% a month, doesn't seem like a lot. Oh, I'm not making much money. I'm not making any money. 24 divided by 72. 72 divided by 24. So you can figure out how quickly your account can double. The math behind the small monthly returns really, really adds up. So that's important. Let's look at some specific examples of this option, uh, option wheel. And I'll talk to you why we talk about it as a wheel. Only stocks you want to own. I can't stress that enough. Only stocks you want to own for months, maybe even years, depending on how things act. So the money is tied up in the stock. Again, it's cash secured. We want to use high volatility stocks, relative. All right, we showed you some stocks that had some relatively low volatility. Buying the call options was cheaper. Buying the put options was more efficient. In this example, Using this strategy, I typically want to see a volatility of 45, 50% or higher. And I want to use this on low price stocks where I know what the worst case scenario is. $5 stocks, $10 stocks, BlackBerry, JCPenney have been fantastic ways to get into these stocks, waiting for them to bottom. And I'll show you an example of a small dollar stock. And it's an interesting example, I'll say for a number of reasons. And here it is, Sprint. All right, Sprint was a dog. Sprint was a dog. But if you look at a multi-year chart, there's some strong support at five and a half. Five and a half. <clears throat> so someone asks about the percentages, but what of dollar value? Again, it depends on how much you're investing per trade. Trading is all percentages. Your return is not about your dollars. It's how much return, what percentage return did you get on your investment? What was your investment? And we're going to talk about your return on investment here very quickly. If you're getting a 3% return or a 4% or a 5% return in in 18 days or 20 days or 30 days, annualize that. That's a big, big, healthy return with a high probability. So you want to make sure, so you want to make sure, no PNS or J&J, right, P&G, right, because those stocks don't have any volatility. So you need volatility to make this work for you because your break even is not, is, is too close with those, those, uh, those stocks that don't have any volatility. So it has to be stocks that have had some movement or have, have some volatility. Them. Sprint's here a good example. Let's get through our example here. Your volatility is around 50%. Sprint been trading, came down to those lows. Key support at 5.5, selling the 5.5 put. That's what I want to do. I want to get into Sprint. I could put in a price and say, listen, I'll buy it when it gets to 525. All right, I'll put in a price and wait for the market to come to me. Or I could sell the 550 put and take in some premium as a way to get into it um, at a lower level or get paid not to. So August 29th, not so long ago, selling the September option, the September five and a half put, the September options go off the board tomorrow. So barring catastrophe and sprint overnight, things look good. And the idea was taking in 20 cents, 20 cents on your risk, your risk is $5.30. $5.30 is where you would be long from. You would get assigned, take your 550 strike because you would, you have, you're giving someone else the right to be long from 550. I'm sorry, short from 550. So you would be long from 550 minus the premium you took in. So 530 is your basis. So at the time, my break even was 6% lower. My max profit is 4% higher. So this would profit if the stock went up 
the stock went sideways or the stock went down. All right, so for where I come from, that's pretty good. The only way it doesn't profit is if the stock goes down more than 6% in a period of three weeks. 6% three weeks, eh, that can happen. Mathematically, it's very, very, very unlikely. So we'll look at it here, the break even on this. Uh, the five-year lows were 536. I had the right to be long from a lower level than the, than the, the multi-year lows. So I'm not worried about that. I wasn't worried about that. I'm not worried about that. In this example, we can see here, this is a sprint chart. What happens? Boom. The stock moves up to 675. There we go. All right? The only downside on this is that we didn't buy calls. We sold puts. All right? There's the downside. We didn't make as much money as we could have. But it was a probability trade, a high probability trade. The delta on that option was, you know, there was about a 80% probability that things were going to be above break even at expiration. So again, probability was on our side. We knew our maximum risk. We knew our worst case scenario. Our worst case scenario was being long sprint from $5.30 5, 5 when, the all, when the lows are $5.36. I'm not afraid of that because I can wait for that market to make an adjustment. And in this instance, we also saw bullish divergence, whereas where it made new lows, we didn't make new highs in volatility. So that is very, very, very much a positive. So everything added up for us on this strategy. Um, the only downside is there was a 20% gain in the stock and we only made four. All right? But if we do this on multiple stocks on a monthly basis, get two, three, four, five percent it adds up with 80% probability, it adds up, and that's what we're looking for. Yes, it would have been more beneficial to buy the stock and just buy a call, but there was more risk in that. You know, selling a cash secured put gives you that cushion, profit from an up move, a down move, and a sideways move. So that's the idea behind the option wheel as a way to get into a stock at a lower level. Now, to get into the wheel part, let's say that we got, <coughs> excuse me, let's say that the stock got a sign and we were long from 530. Now, these options expire tomorrow, all right? So tomorrow... That option goes to zero. I got to keep that 20 cents. 20 cents was a 4% return in a period of three weeks. No complaints. You know, multiply that out. That's 48% on an annual basis with an 80% probability. No complaints. And getting into, into Sprint at $5.30 was no issue. No issue. Because, again, the worst case scenario is 100 shares, an option controls, uh, 100, uh, one option controls 100 shares, was that I had $530 tied up. $530. Do brokers easily give permission to trade these cash secure puts versus naked puts? Absolutely. Absolutely for sure. Because you know you have the money in your account to buy the shares. It's a way to buy the shares at a discount. So it's no different than putting in a limit order to buy uh, 100 shares at $5.30. It's a way to get paid if you don't get into the shares at your, at your lower level. And option brokers that specialize in options, like a Trade Monster or a Thinkorswim, they're very savvy about this. And uh, a cash secured put, you know, you've got the money in your account. It's a way to get in the stock at a lower level. Um, so to talk about the wheel aspect of this, if you got long, let's say that it's, that Sprint had gone down and Sprint was at five five fifteen tomorrow. Okay, I'd be long from five thirty when Monday came around. I'd be long a hundred shares from five thirty. Five hundred thirty dollars. That's that's tied up in that position. But <coughs> what we would do then, and why it's called the wheel. What we would do then is we would sell a covered call for October on it to lower our basis. So let's say we sell another uh, an October call, a 550 call up above for 20 cents. So my basis went from 530 down to 510. So now my overall risk is $510, and I have sold a 550 call up above for October. And if it's above 550 at expiration on October options, then it takes me out. And I make that 40 cents in between. All right. If it's not above 550 at expiration in the October options, then guess what? November comes around, I sell another 550 call. Boom! I lower my basis now to 490. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. November, December, January. Every month you sell a covered call against your existing stock position if and when you do get it assigned until you get called out again. So you sell the put as a way to get into the stock at a lower level. Then if you get assigned the stock, then you sell a call against it. And then if you get, when it takes off, then the call takes you out. And in the meantime, every month it's lowering your basis until it takes you out. So if you don't get it put to you this month, then that, that's more money that you have for the next month when you sell another put on it to, to get into a lower level. So it's a way to buy into the stock at a lower, 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 lower level. Okay. 
uh, interactive brokers, they're fine. Um, I've just found that if you have an issue, you know, it's, uh, you're kind of kind of on your own. Maybe you have a different experience, but uh, I'm not as focused on, you know, getting the free or near free commissions. You know, sometimes, and I know this is an odd story, uh, sometimes paying a commission makes you think. You know, a $10 commission or whatever, a $5 commission on a, on a per option or a couple dollars per option, it at least makes you think so you don't over trade. Um, you know, there have been uh, there have been people that have been dissatisfied with customer service when they had an issue or they had something with uh, interactive brokers. But like I said, Trade Monster and uh, Thinkorswimmer are two options professionals that I use that I do business with that I see all the time that that it seems to work and uh, everything has happened. What if it blows through your strike on a sold put? I'm not exactly sure about that. Uh, what you're asking there? Um, when, the, when you sell a put, that's the price you would be assigned your long shares minus what you took in. So if the stock goes down to $4, you're long the stock. In this example, we'd be long the stock from $5.30 and the stock's at $4. And then you would look to sell a call against it to lower your basis from $5.30 down to $4.75. And then you'd sell another call to lower your basis down to $4.50 until you get called out. And you're prepared to continue to do that. That's why I said you know, barring a very significant move in a very short period of time. In this example, this was only two, 18 days, um, a significant percentage move. Again, you're prepared to own the stock at a lower level. And if you have to keep writing calls against it until you get taken out, that's why it's called the wheel. You sell the put, you get assigned, you sell the call against it, you get called out, repeat, option wheel. Go round and round and round on stocks that you want to own. Some small dollar stocks, good example was BlackBerry, JCPenney, and so forth. JCPenney went from five bucks to 10 bucks and so forth and so forth. So there's a lot of different aspects to it, but it's a way to get into a stock at a lower level. So you can see Sprint has taken off and we only made 4%. Okay, it is what it is. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, that's the idea is that to use that as a way to get in a, in a stock at a lower level and to build a portfolio on it at a discount. If there are stocks you wanna buy, but they're too high of a price, you can use this as a way to get into it. I use this as a way to generate revenue on a, low, a monthly basis um, with high probability on a, you know, a regular, in, in a regular manner, um, but you can also use this as a way to get into a stock at a discount. Sell a put to get into a stock that you want lower. If you don't get it, so what? You got paid. Buy the stock at a discount or get paid not to. There's no downside to that, and a lot of people use this as a way to build their portfolio on stocks they want to own at a discount. Here's a great example, JCPenney. And JCPenney... Uh, now the volatility has declined a little bit because it's gone from five bucks to ten bucks. But there was a lot of opportunities there. We had that double bottom. Sell some cash secured puts. Get get into the stock. Then you can sell some calls against it. JC Penney has been trading between eight dollars and ten dollars. That chart targets twelve dollars. More upside in JC Penney. But use fear to your advantage in stocks that you want to own. Just last year, everybody was saying JC Penney was going bankrupt. Same thing was said about Best Buy two years ago. Um, you know. Same thing was saying with BlackBerry was over. Same thing people said about Yahoo was dead. Facebook at $20, that company's going nowhere. You're using the sentiment to your advantage when the stock is inflated and puffed up because everybody's fearful. You're using that as a way to buy the stock in gentle terms. Not trying to pick a bottom, but trying to pick a gentle bottom by selling a cash secured put as a way to get in the stock at a lower level or get paid not to. So that's the idea behind it. So let me stress again what the strategy is. Only stocks you want to own, only stocks that you could hold if you wanted to for months and years. That's why you're paying for them in cash. And then you're selling calls against them. You're using high volatility, lower priced stocks. And it's a probability revenue play. It's all about probability. The two examples I showed you are all about probability. Every trade I do as a professional is about probability. What's my probability? What's my risk? First off, what's my risk? What's my probability for every trade? that I evaluate and what's my break even. If you know those three things, you can make an intelligent, highly intelligent decision to move forward or to not move forward. So that's the strategy there. Sell puts, get the stock, then sell the covered calls again. Now the service I have with bar chart is bullseye options. It's an options trade alert service using a, these particular strategies and others. Right now, I've been limited in some of the minimal strategies because the market is what the market is. When conditions change, then strategies will change. You take advantage of what the markets give you. And right now, the markets have been giving us fantastic overall trends uh, and, and, and strength. That may change. 
Um, but for right now, that's how I'm positioned. I have my risk control. I have my plan in place. So the key is that you can use option to control your risk so you can trade based upon your lifestyle and not watch the markets on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. You can use simple option strategies. I'm not trying to impress you. I'm using options as a vehicle. can profit from up, down, or sideways markets. And in these particular strategies, they don't require a lot of attention. You're never going to get an email saying, hey, you got to get out. you got to do something now. Something happened. You've got a plan. You put in a stop loss before you uh, get in. You put in a profit order before you get in. You let the markets do the work so you don't have to do, do the work. You can look at things on more of a weekly basis and not stare at your computer. So with my bullseye option service, I come up with three trades a week, three trades, detailed trade alerts, beginning to end, nuts to bolts, specifics of the strategy, of the stock, of the risk reward, of the probability, everything. You can either get them via text or emails. You get a detailed explanation on each and every trade. You can see, your, see the portfolio online and the performance of each and every trade. And looking at it right now, 22 of the 32 trades that have been closed out have been profitable. So that's 69% so far on the uh, bullseye bar chart options closed out trades. You can view it at any particular time. And the options in the portfolio right now, the long options, the nearest term option is January. So that's four months of time, four months and a day with tomorrow. You get an email, you get a text alert anytime there's a... Uh, Stop loss is adjusted, which is done when the position moves 25% in your favor. You'll tighten up your stop loss to protect what we have. Um, you'll also get an alert when uh, profit's been taken or you've been stopped out. You don't use those alerts to do your trading. You use them to check your account because you put in your plan before, uh, before you even get, get your, you know, when you do your trade. You get a weekly recap of all positions, and you get a one-hour live weekly webinar where you can ask me questions live in the markets on Wednesdays, 9.30 Central Time. We can talk about the positions we have, what we're looking at, strategies, ask your questions, and uh, get a bit, bit of feel for how I look at the markets and what I'm, what I'm looking for. Uh, the question here Doug asked was, uh, JetBlue 46% Jet 46 profit, um, and in Apple, it was 51% profit uh, in two months. Correct. Those were the two examples I gave you. You can go to our webpage, and I'll show you that in a second. It'll be, show you all the closeout trades, every closeout trade that we have done. And you can see uh, the positives and the negatives, the risks, the rewards. Steve Snyder asks, if I sell a 45 strike and the stock goes down, four, down goes to 40, I'm down, say, $700. I'll take the stock at 45. Uh, what happens to the loss premium of $700? Okay, I don't know the specific examples, but you get to keep that premium. So you take that, you subtract that from your basis price. So if you, if your strike price was 40, 40 minus 700, it, you know that that tells you that'll be your actual basis price for your cash secured put <coughs> strategy. Here you go, 14 day trial for our product, and then I'll answer some questions. Uh, more questions here. Barchart.com/bullseye/wm0918. If uh, Yana, if you could put that in the in the message board. I'd appreciate that. Everybody can get a 14-day free trial. Um, three trades a week means six, uh, six trades, actually. You'll get two one-hour live webinars. You'll get two weekly updates. So 14 days gives you a good, good, good opportunity um, to, to see what's going on. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Very professional crew here. I love it. I love it a lot. All right, 14-day trial. Give it a try. Use options as a vehicle. That's all they are. They have so many advantages over buying or selling shares of stock. And hopefully I showed you a lot of them today. Um, and to get back to the closed out trades, 22 of 32, that's 68%. There's the subscription details. $99 a month is what this costs. Or if you want to take advantage of the discount, you can buy an annual subscription that gives you um, the cost of eight months. So you're getting four months for free. So you're getting 12 months for the price of eight months. That's essentially the cost there. The price of this is actually going up here uh, September 30th, I've been told. So you've got a couple of weeks for your trial to test it out, see if it's uh, something you need. Um, are you trading your own recommendations, your own live account? There are restrictions and rules as far as front running goes, so I'm not able to trade the specific uh, trades prior to or within 24 hours of issuing a recommendation. Those are the laws. I will use that stock substitution strategy or the cash secured put strategy on my own anytime, day or night. <coughs> but there are very specific rules if you have a recommendation service. 
um, and take a look at the, each and every recommendation I've done. Go to the go to the web page and evaluate and see if this is see if this is for you. Do you make recommendations on low cost stocks, low price stocks? Sure, there'll be stocks that were low low price, like we just talked about JetBlue, and there are high price stocks like Apple. Once you get up to the ninety dollar level, somewhere in there, then it probably behooves me to put on spreads because the straight out option is going to be probably too cost prohibitive. So in general terms, I want to keep the options between $1,000 and $250. And so if you're risking half, you're risking $500 or $125. That's what it comes down to. So a, a very reasonable account size can handle it. So the, the offer is you get eight months of the subscription. Uh, I'm sorry, you get 12 months of the subscription for eight month price. Those are naked puts, but I don't call them naked puts because naked, eight, a lot of times getting naked can get you in trouble. We all know that. Naked puts it may imply that you don't have the money in your account. They're called cash secured puts. You have the money in your account to buy the 100 shares. That money is tied up. It's mentally, it's physically spoken for. So you will have a commitment to buy that stock at a discount uh, down below. Let me finish up here and then I'll answer our questions here. 14 day trial, there we go. Be happy to answer questions and uh, give you some insight on this. Here we go. Uh, the question I see here is how much time does it take? Well, you get three alerts a week. You look at an alert, how long does it take you to read alert? You see if it fits your risk profile, you want to do it, great, boom. You enter it into your uh, platform, off to go, you're done. Um, very, in the near, very near future, we're going to have some auto trading where you can set it up with a, a couple brokers and you just tell them to allocate a certain dollar amount to each and every trade and they just do it automatically for you. So these trades are not necessarily time sensitive and if I want to get into an option at, you know, let's say I want to buy an option at 400, I'll put in a price of 450 or better, so meaning that is you don't have to react immediately when you get the alert. Typically, you'll have some wiggle room of a couple of days. I'm looking at a big picture trade. I'm not looking, looking for something to happen in the next hour, two hours, four hours, two days. I'm looking at a big picture. So that's the commitment of time. And then I look at things on a weekly basis. You get your weekend end report where it analyzes how the position's doing, support resistance, how it's acting at key levels, what our expectations are, has things changed, yada, yada. You log into our weekly webinar where you ask any questions or see what I'm thinking. And uh, so it's more hands off. You're not watching the markets on a day by day basis. You're taking advantage of what the market does without the work of watching markets all day long. All right, why not do a spread? Well, spreads, you've got to pay two commissions. Spreads um, don't get to their maximum profit typically until expir expiration. So exiting them early, you're not going to get as much profit and you're not going to have as much flexibility as you would have straight out buying a put or a call. Um, I don't have any problems doing spreads, but spreads are typically when volatility is higher. Two, three years ago, I was doing spreads, but now volatility is very low. I'd rather do a directional trade in an individual stock, buying the right color put, and having that great, great flexibility. Question is, how would you trade mankind right now? Have to look at the chart here, um, but mankind is something that's got some very high volatility. Do I want to buy the shares at a lower level? Um, that's a question I have to ask myself. And at what price am I comfortable owning the shares? You know, we had uh, traded some puts on Mankind here in the past, made some money. Another one, um, it was below our break even, selling calls against it now to lower our basis. Are you, are, do you want to own Mankind for the long term? That is the question that you have to be comfortable with um, to do so. Would you sell a cash secured put or buy a call on Mankind? Well, buying a call on that stock the call options aren't going to be cheap because the volatility is what, 70, 80 percent. Um, the question that uh, Jorge asks is why not buy calls out of the money? That's what I started the presentation with. We want to use probability. I want to have a probability of 75 percent of higher uh, on my trades. That's what I want. Uh, it's, it's a way to profit from only modest moves in the markets. It doesn't matter what option you buy if there's a huge move in the stock and you, you, you're on the right side. But if there's only a couple dollar, two, three, four, five dollar move, and you have the out of the money options, guess what? You're out of the money. So that's that's the reason. It's all about probability. I'd rather buy a more expensive in the money option to risk half of it than buy an out of the money option to risk the whole thing. Mathematically, things are so much better, so much more in your favor. Um, can you cancel in any month after the trial? You can cancel at any time. No problems. You cancel. That's the way she goes. It's 99 bucks a month, and uh, that's how it goes. Question here, um, how do you pick and choose of all the trades? Well, the idea behind this is I determine each and every trade. I, I have some risk rankings as far as how risky I think that individual trade is, my confidence level in those. But each and every trade, 
when I evaluate and come up with it, I've got a very high level of competence in it, obviously. I can't say which one is the best and which one is the worst. The idea is, is to do each and every trade, um, and like we talked about, divide your account into 20 pieces so that you're putting in you know, $500 in each trade or $1,000 into each trade or whatever, so that way you have equal weighting. Because I can't tell you which ones are the best, because if I could tell which ones are the best, guess what? I would only do which ones are the best. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, can I exit early? That's another question. Sure, you can get out any time. I've got my parameters in place. Um, and I talked about trailing the stop loss up. It's not a trail per, per se. It's a plan that if the stock moves up 25%, if the option position, sorry, moves up 25%, instead of having my stop loss at 50%, I'm going to move it up, so I'm going to reduce my exposure. So I'm going to reduce it from negative 50% to negative 25%. So guess what? If the stock pukes from that point, I'm not going to give away a huge amount of that profit that I hadn't banked. I'm you know, not going to take a maximum loss. I'm going to take a lesser, lesser loss. So you can exit at any time. If we're up 45, we were up 49% in Apple, and the exit order was at 50%, and we missed it the first time. Eventually it came, and we got it, but it ended up taking another three weeks. You know, so some people may have exited early. You have that choice, but I set these parameters in place so you have your trading plan, and it's not a subjective decision. Is that the proper, is that the proper uh, usage there? So can I exit early? Um, as far as the timing goes, this fits most people's lifestyles. Uh, this was kind of modeled around, I've got a couple of friends that are pilots, and they are, uh, let's say, amateur traders. Um, they know just enough to be dangerous, and they did a lot of things that novice traders do, buy too little time, uh, trade those out of the money options. They understood the basics of options, but they were using more of a gambling instrument. So the idea behind this is to look long term because those guys fly a lot and they'll be able to watch the market some days and they may not be able to watch the markets for another four days. So you can look at your positions on a more weekly basis. So if you're in that kind of position, most every people, most everybody has jobs, not, uh, not, a whole, not as many people as they would like, have the opportunity to sit in front of a computer all day and watch every market tick it down, up or down. And actually, at my age, I found that I don't enjoy that anymore. I'd rather be doing other things. I've got a six-year-old, seven-year-old daughter, take her to soccer practice, I take her to dance, pick her up from school, have lunch with her in the summertime, you know, play with, you know, I have a lot of flexibility. I am not tied to the computer. I'm still taking advantage of the big moves in the markets, but I'm using it more for my lifestyle. What is your win percent each year and your year-end gains. That's all on the website. This service was launched with Bar Chart. I've been doing this particular service for three years. Bar Chart launched their version of this service in May. And like I said, 22 out of the 32 closeout trades have been profitable. That's 69% so far. Um, the average over the last three years has about been about 70%. So it's not about winning on each and every trade. It's about having a high degree of probability and using great money management. If you use great money management, you really only have to be successful 60, 55, or 60% of the time. This gives you a lot of wiggle room. This is 70% of the time. And we've seen some fantastic markets and some fantastic opportunities. And the markets are going to change. I don't know when. I don't know how. But in the meantime, I'm going to keep doing what, what I'm doing. When the markets change, our strategy will change. I've got tools in the toolbox to take advantage of whatever the markets throw at me. How much does the cost of each trade and what's the amount advisable to start with? I gave you a couple examples. There was a low price option that was $200. <coughs> Excuse me, there was a higher price option that was $1,000. So realistically, again, you're not risking that $200. You're not risking that $1,000. You're risking half of that. But that's how much the investment, the investment is uh, in, those, for those, in, your max, in your maximum risk. So again, it's all about money management. And that's what I preach. Probability, risk control, money management. So you can look at our web page here, um, and uh, that should answer many, many of your questions. Uh, I don't know if I have a projector fired up, but I don't want to mess with things too much. Yeah, I don't want to mess with it. I was going to show you. You're going to show you the web page. Go, go to the offer, sign up, get your 14 days free, or go to the web page, and you'll see all of the trades, and you can click on on the trades to get a detailed trade uh, uh, trade report, so you can see what goes into it. It's not just a recommendation. Buy this here, put a stop here, get out of this here. There's a specific, there's a long form, a thousand, a thousand words or so, explaining why that stock, why that option, why that strike, you know, what I'm looking for, what my expectations are. 69% winners reflects how much in dollars. That's impossible to say again, Doug. I can only do percentages because I can't tell you 
you know, if you buy, if it's not one of each trade because I can't have the Apple trade be six times more important than the JetBlue trade. Okay, they were both winners. They both gained nearly 50%, but they had different investment costs. So if you put $1,000 in on McDonald's, I mean, sorry, in on uh, Apple, then you, then you would have needed to buy five of the JetBlue options. It's got to be apples to apples, oranges to oranges. I can't just say a dollar amount. I can't say one of each because that would make the a more expensive positions that much more important. So it's about percentages, percentages, adding up all the, all the percentages. It's average 16.5% positive, 16.4% positive per every trade that's been closed out. Winners and losers, 16.4%. So the cumulative percent on those, and again, we've got numerous positions open at this time, but 16.4 times 32 is 525% cumulative profit right now. And my weekly report here that I just did, where's my numbers? Um, the portfolio has some positions that are not positive right now in open positions, not closed out, still have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, January, March, and April options, obviously four months, six months, and seven months of time. Um, so I think the, the net there was negative, maybe negative 80%. So the net overall is still 400% positive in the whole portfolio. Every trade uh, bought, sold, opened, closed, taken profit, still open. It's still all out there. All right. You have some sort of P&L at the site. I've got a analysis of the of the positions and their performance. That's what I have. I don't have. I'm not a money manager. I'm not uh, managing the money for you. I am showing you the individual performance results. Now that to do the P&L, you'd have to do each trade an equal amount, and make sure that you do each and every trade. Now you you get to decide whether you want to participate in some of these trades or not, and if they fit, fit, fit your risk tolerance. Now here, if you have further questions, you can email uh, Jay Brown at Bar Chart, or you can call Bar Chart, and I'll be happy to answer your questions, or there is a link on the Bar Chart page to send me an email, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. I think a lot of these questions and specifics can be answered if you go and you sign up for the 14-day trial, um, that by going to the weekly webinars, which are also, um, archived as well. So if you're not there at 9.30 in the morning on a Wednesday, Central Time, and again I use Central Time because I'm in Chicago, um, the key is on those in the market live webinars that I let the markets open for an hour because markets can open up higher, lower, a professional trader looks to see where we are after the first hour, if we fill the gap, if we not fill the gap, and evaluates where we're at, and it's the middle of the week. So at the beginning of the week you've got, you know, certain nonsense, at the end of the week you've got certain nonsense, in the middle of the week it's kind of a, a state of the union where the markets are, what I'm looking at, what I'm thinking, how we're handling the positions we have, and what new positions we're looking for, and also an opportunity to answer any questions that you might have. So if you came to me and asked me about Mankind, I could look at Mankind and say, listen, if I was selling a cash secure put, this is probably what I'd be looking at. And I would narrow it down to a couple choices. I don't give individual investment advice, but I would narrow it down and want to make sure that you're using high probability, you're using risk control, and you know what your break even is on every trade. You live to fight another day. There's an old saying in the markets, you don't trade for today, you trade for tomorrow. Tomorrow, there's always another opportunity. There's always a chance to make money tomorrow, in the next day, in the next week. It wasn't like that 10 years ago. If you didn't make your money when you had your chance, tough luck. There's always another opportunity. Markets up, markets down, markets sideways, more volatility, less volatility, global events. There's always going to be opportunity. Just to speak about opportunity, where I see the opportunities right now, a lot of the energy stocks, crude oil held $90 a barrel. That was the midpoint of the last five years, from $65 to 115 That held strong, had a double bottom, and had higher lows last week with a key reversal closing higher. The energy XLE, every time it's sold off, it's made new highs, so I'm not going to be the one to say it's not going to do that again, and it projects a 15% move from here. So a lot of energy stocks that have pulled back. I like British Petroleum. I like VLO. A lot of energy stocks for the long term using April and maybe even June options for some recovery because we all know anything that happens in this world can cause a spike in energy prices. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Yana. I had a great time. Good luck and see you soon in our webinar.